Welcome to the Comedy Slab. I'm Adrian Lacey, speaking to you from the southeast of England. I am anti-socially distanced from his nibs, the squire of the middle Middlelands. <laughs> the- That didn't really work. Um, Shane O'Connor is the one wheezing in the background. Uh, And he's uh, 170 miles or so away. So um, hopefully uh, any bugs can't hop across that distance. Or if they can, they deserve to be able to. Now, this is... uh, You may or may not agree with this, Shane, but... um, I don't agree. After 134 episodes, this is... No, you won't know until I finish the sentence. I'm just used to being Let me finish, Prime Minister. (laughs) You know, uh, it's a long way to tip a contrary. Um, this is the first comedy slab. Uh, we've got 134 in the numbers of episodes before the title of the show we're putting on the slab could just as well be the name, uh, an alternative name of the comedy slab. Namely, this week we are mostly reviewing the Channel 4 show Catastrophe. And hopefully it won't be any more of a catastrophe than any other week in terms of our uh, reviewing of it but we'll get to that in just a moment Uh, if you want to do your homework if you haven't already done it it's series one episode four of catastrophe with uh, sharon horgan and rob delaney and you'll find it certainly in the uk at least on all four and that's an app and uh, you can also get it via uh, the website uh, again in the uk certainly uh, channel4.com Sorry, it's an app and it's a film, it's a movie. Right, that doesn't work. We can see each other, unfortunately, (laughs) through the good offices of Skype. He's in his good office. Um, Yes, I thought you were motioning for me to stop or that I'd said something wrong, which wouldn't be for the first time. Anyway, dare I ask, I mean, I tried to start this feature and then I started regretting it as soon as I started starting it. Um, any thoughts you want to share with us? You don't have to if it's going to give the game away because we like a bit of jeopardy. We have two audio clips. After the first audio clip, we get to find out in the form of a, through, through the medium of dance. No, through the medium of the headline, whether Shane likes the show or not. So it's the, <laughs> the homework I set him last week for this week. We take it in turns. Um, but I did, I'd been trying to introduce via the back door or the tradesman's entrance, um, w- what you felt in terms of anticipation when I sent the, sent the homework last week. But then I felt it rather backfired the other week because it kind of, it lanced the surprise and the jeopardy of knowing what you might feel about the show uh, when you review it for the slab. So it's up to you. It's, it's optional. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say will be taken down and used in evidence against you. Trousers. Well, I don't think it will give anything away if I tell you what I thought ahead of watching this because I had um, sort of like a dual emotion. I started off thinking, oh, actually, I think I couldn't really remember anything about the programme. I've I've watched some from the Mm. series because I know I watched it with Angelina, my wife, and I can't remember how many we watched and why we drifted away from it. And I think we did drift away from it. I don't think we went, oh, that's rubbish. So I kind of got fond memories, and I'm thinking, oh, I've got fond memories of this. This would be all right. And then when it started, yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I don't... It's not so fun. Yeah, I, oh, I, oh, I'm not so sure. And so, and then the trepidation set in, and I was like, oh, 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 oh no, this is going to be a long half hour. What? Oh, dear. Um, so that's where I was before I kind of, you know sort of started to watch it as it were or almost as I was well while I was watching it right I, th- I think most of us got that um well I didn't but I'm going to ask some of our brighter listeners to translate but then after I um, watched it I was more like oh that was that was <laughs> oh. that was hard work doing that I had to use my eyes and ears and everything and concentrate <sighs> you're being a tease now you're deliberately wrong footing us I feel anyway you've confused most of us and certainly most of me so let's park that for a moment and uh, hopefully we'll get some kind of resolution in the form of uh, your headline after the first of two audio clips. Before we do that, we like to delve just briefly into a bit of comedy news for the week. And the headline I'm looking at on chortle.co.uk, which hopefully you're also looking at, is uh, BBC confirms toast of Tinseltown. Mm. Now, is that actually the title or is that a clever headline? He is actually going, this is uh, Matt Berry as... Stephen Toast. Uh, we'll get to where it's come from uh, originally, but um, it says, oh, it's provisionally titled, so it could change. But So, I don't know, you'd think they'd know by now, but hey, it's uh, alliterative, so that'll do. Um, 
it, it, the article it I'm reading is a slightly different it? article. It does say the working title of Toast of Tinseltown. But, I mean, basically, he goes to the... Uh, uh, it looks like he's going to the South Birmingham suburb of Hollywood. Um, but uh, no, I joke. It was the other one, the one in America. Yeah. What, what do you What do you think about this? I mean, I got mixed emotions about this because I want to know. Not again. I want to. Yeah. This is. I spend my life in a dichotomy. I want to mm. know why Channel Four didn't take it up. I wonder whether this is a checkbook transfer. But I have to say. I am surprised it's going straight to BBC One. I am genuinely surprised by this. I'm very pleased for Matt Berry, but I I didn't see it. I mean, I, I think it's probably me being selfish. It's uh, it's like a friend said to me years ago. She couldn't stand it. Um, uh, where you were before we hit record, you mentioned Morrissey in the connection with autobiographies, but she couldn't stand it when the Smiths went big time. It was a classic thing, you know. They were her band until everyone got on the bandwagon. Yeah. Forgive the pun, yeah. and then she didn't want to know. It's right. Well. You know, everyone's got him now. He's not my special secret anymore. I remember Mark King and, saying that to me from Level 42 when I, I interviewed him and he said that. He said, we when we signed to Polydor, he said mm. they got really tetchy because our audience just dropped off overnight because they'd been playing the clubs around London and the home counties. And you're right, they, yeah. were, these, they were these people's, they were their band. And that's, that's the, yeah. the way and it is. And suddenly they didn't feel the ownership Does That, that doesn't anymore. happen with comedy, though, does it? Do you think so much? I don't know. I could... I don't see why it would happen any less, really. Yeah, I genuinely don't know. I, I wish Matt Berry all the best in the show, and I, I'm lucky enough to know a makeup artiste who works on it. Uh, it speaks very highly of Matt Berry. Um, I, I wish, or I know how hard they work. And Matt Berry, she says, like my makeup friend says, so uh, he's in virtually every scene, so he doesn't get a scene off. So he's, he's very hard working. What I don't know is whether it it could ever be a sort of big BBC One juggernaut. I allowed myself for a brief moment, but this will only rile you, to think, could it be, I know you're no fan, but could it be as big as, say, a Mrs. Brown's Boys, mm. whatever you feel about it. Yeah. I'm talking that size, whatever it is, Sunday night hit, uh, or wherever they put it these days. But um, do you have a feeling about that, a gut feeling? Could it be a monster hit, or will it always be a cult hit, however big the channel? I think they'll ruin it. I think I think you'll, you know, they'll they'll put a laughter track on it or... Uh, just knowing their track history for taking things and completely codging them up. I think the problem with this is, and this is always, mm. the, you know, I know this is a BBC thing. I think this is this is a problem per se. Is that if you if you've got something that's worked and has done three series, and you're coming to do series four, you have to do series four in the same way that you did the other three series because that is now what your audience expects. So it doesn't matter how artistically you think you want to do it or you know how much creative integrity you want to pump into it you have to make it look and feel and act the same as the successful product that you had for three series and if you don't do that you will wreck it it's complicated but anyway as i say i wish it all the best i will watch it with interest uh we've slabbed one edition of uh the obviously channel four toast of london uh, I can see a very strong argument for slabbing a toast of Tinseltown or whatever they call it. Yeah, I think that's, that's not a, not a bad idea, and and probably it'd be best to refresh your palate with uh, uh, with a toast of London episode just to see how they how they stack up. That would be quite an interesting process, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah, uh, it's time to move to our main theme, which is to dissect catastrophe, for which we have the very non-catastrophic loyal fan by the name of Joss who suggested this. So uh, thanks again, Joss. Uh, we're probably accompanying you again on one of your walks by uh, the River Medway uh, when you tend to listen to us. Don't slip up on the snow, which uh, may be on the ground as we speak. Uh, or if you're listening in the height of summer, that would be very odd. And we'd all have to worry about climate change if it got to that. So it's Series 1, Episode 4. Um, what's the setup? In a, in a sentence, uh, these two, Sharon Horgan uh, is the actor's name now i have to um double check my facts she becomes sharon morris in this series uh rob delaney likewise becomes rob norris so we've got morris and norris um but they don't use their surname so uh, it's one of those little almost an in joke anyway the, uh, the 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 two characters at least sharon and rob uh get together and uh on a i think on a first date uh sharon gets pregnant so it's uh 
is that the catastrophe of the title or is it the making of them? But anyway, they choose to stay together and try and make a go of it. Sharon is not in the first flush of youth. I think I can very delicately say uh, without too much fear of contradiction because she is described at one point in the show as a geriatric mum. Uh, that is actually ge genuinely um, a clinical description. Is that over the age of forty? That term is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. But well, no. I because I, my my uh, when Frank was born, Angelina was forty. Um, right. And they just the NHS are just well they are anyway, but the NHS are just an absolute nightmare. With they're just fixated on now she's forty. Um, mm. She does. Um, women's dance classes she takes women's dance classes she teaches kids dancing well before the pandemic she was doing it like five five six days a week uh, mm. all, all day on a saturday i mean to say she's physically fit is an understatement um <laughs> mm. you know she's not overweight or anything like that and all they obsessed about was was because they saw on the that you're you're 40 that's her age. And that's who she is. Yeah, and, and therefore, you know, and mm. there were there were twenty year olds coming in who were before they were pregnant were twenty seven stone, and they they were you know they weren't batting an eye. You just think, how on earth does this work? But yeah, I, th I think it's around forty. Right. So in this episode, uh, we've got the uh, and in, indeed in this audio clip you're about to hear, there's a little tail end of a scene. I just want to include, and um, hopefully we'll have time to get to it. I, I want you to listen word for word, dear listener and Shane as well, um, to what happens at the uh, right at the beginning of this, which is the tail end of a scene, uh, Sharon uh, in the kitchen with her brother called Fergal. Uh, they're in Fergal's house. Um, Fergal's got a partner we see there. Uh, we don't hear her in this clip. Might touch on that as well. But, um, but the parents are there as well. Sharon and uh, Fergal's parents are there. This is... So you get the tail end of that scene in the kitchen and then Sharon moves into the lounge and it's the biggie breaking the news, uh, two bits of news to the parents uh, in the lounge. Uh, but first, that conversation with Fergal. Can I tell them? I mean, this is taking too long. No, you're an observer today, OK? Like the UN. You say a syllable or cut your hands off. Whatever happened to that Owen fella? He was around for a while. Oh, he moved to Africa, didn't he, Cher? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he, he had to go to Africa. He was a good man. Well, I won't be running off to Africa anytime soon. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. So, um, Mum, Dad, we've got something we'd like to tell you, talk to you about. Um, it's lovely news that I think will, will make you very happy, and that's... We're getting married. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Mum. I thought you were going to tell us you were pregnant there for a minute. And I'm pregnant. That's also part of this. It's like one of those gags in it where you say, oh, remember that dreadful woman you used to go out with? Whatever happened to her? <laughs> I married her. I'm marrying you. Yeah, it's that, it's that kind of thing, yeah. isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? It's, um, I, I... I can't remember what we call these. Do we call these dram dram coms, like sort of drama comedies? I call it a uh, I call it a smile com because okay. uh, I laughed all of once. We might get to that in a in a mo, but um, yeah. All and uh, don't forget to give us your headline. Let's do that first, shall we? All that yeah. Although there there oh. isn't. You say you laugh once, but it is. It's it's not that it isn't funny, is it? It is. Uh, it's it is. There, there is, there is, there are funny lines in there, aren't there? But you're right; it's not, it's not a, mm. it's not a belly buster. Is it? it's not like a, oh dear, you know. It's not, it's not a rib tickler. But then it's not setting out to. So uh, we, we have to be careful how we approach it. Anyway, I'm dying to hear your headline. Okay, my headline I is um, not a catastrophe for me. Oh, now that sounds like fulsome praise. Yeah. It Have is. I gone over the top? Well, you know, it, it, it wasn't a catastrophe. Oh. <laughs> now it's sounding lukewarm. What was the interview? But... What was your interview like? Well, it wasn't a catastrophe. <laughs> no. I, yes. I, how, is, I, how is your marriage? I, I walked away from this one feeling a bit a bit kind of... And I don't, I don't know whether analysing it has kind of ruined it a bit for me, but... <laughs> I, Are I you seem... still ambivalent? Like you sort of set the scene at the top of the show? No, no, I can't. I do. I thought it was. There were some 
I thought it was beautiful in terms of and it's the best word I can use to describe. I thought it was beautiful in the way it was put together, the the construction of the scenes, the way that it the way that it wended its way through the episode, the writing, the realism of the dialogue. Not a million jokes in it, but you kind of you realise what mm. kind of animal it is very early on, don't you? Anyway, um, mm. but yeah, I d- there was just something. I kind of felt a little bit just like deflated at the end of it, rather than. Although I, I did kind of think, oh, maybe we should just go back and just watch it, watch it all, because what is it? Three or four series? Three series, isn't it? I think they've done of this. Uh, three series, I think you said. Last yeah. Week, yeah, I don't. I, go on, you see, you tell me what 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 were your thoughts? What did you? What do you make of it? Uh, in my head, I realised it was only uh, after I reflected uh, uh, after the second viewing, because uh, we were trying to uh, hear or uh, see, depending on whether it's TV, radio, podcast, uh, these things uh, twice. Um, I, I, I realised I bracketed it in my head with Lead Balloon. Something about the vibe of it. Um, and I would call that a smile com as well. Um which I've said, and, and we put that on the slab some time back. Uh, all these shows are available, um, our archive, uh, back issues of our magazine are uh, are up there on the internet and wherever you get your podcast. But uh, that too, Lead Balloon, despite being uh, um, the lead, not the lead, uh, is uh, Jack D, if you haven't seen it. Uh, I mean, he's he's a... Uh, a strong stand-up, very experienced in that world, but it, it certainly wasn't belly laughs for me. But I, I said it became our um, TV dinners in a former life with a future former wife. Mm. And um, it was that kind of cosy, reliable, dependable, uh, right, we know what we're getting. We won't fall about laughing. Maybe when you're eating, you don't want to be chortling too much because you get indigestion. But that's where I would bracket it. Um, some nice moments, lots of nice moments. And I should say it's co-written by Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney. And also, no coincidence, I think, in terms of the authorship and ownership, they are two of the exec producers, although I believe there are other execs as well. But um, so they, I imagine, retained quite a bit of uh, creative control over the whole process. It's not often you see that, is it, where where the lead characters... Mm. Are also the, the the writers of of the piece as well, and I do get particularly with Sharon Horgan. When the more you read articles about her, the more mm. you've kind of feel. And in fact, I think she said this in a, in an interview with one of the newspapers, saying that it was there. There is a semi autobiographical element to this. I thought it was uh, uh, even down to the extent of having a child late in life. I think. I think. Late? Yeah, I think so. I might, I might be completely wrong there, but I th- I kind of seem to remember that that's what it was. Now. Right. This is where I thought it was really unusual. Is that if it's if it is semi autobiographical for her, I kind mm. of wonder whether it is for him, and I, and how you would how you would end up writing that is quite interesting. I thought, but uh, and, and that that sort of took up a lot of my time thinking. Well, how would that work then? You kind of almost want to be in at the ground floor, don't you? And watch, sit there watching them write it, or at least get them to record yeah. it on their iPhone while they're while they're writing it, and then you could go back in years to come and, and watch a YouTube video of them actually writing the thing. That, what? How holistic would that be? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> what a great idea! That uh, is. I think, I think they'd probably slap an exclusion order on you. Or do you mean you would be watching without them knowing? Which no, is even no, creepier. no. Like if somebody if somebody sat down and said, "Right, okay, we're going to record this now and record the whole process." I'm sure there are geeks like us who sit there and watch it, watch hours of this rubbish. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, but that that did for the Beatles, didn't it? Uh, turning over the cameras while they were re- attempting to write songs at Twickenham Film Studios. Although now um, it's lauded as one of the greatest moments in Beatle history because you can you can see the whole thing disintegrate before your very eyes, you know. So, <laughs> it's like well, watch- if you like watching car crashes, yeah. It is. It's like watching that, you know, the cartoons where the wheel comes off and then actually passes you. It's that kind of, it's that kind of thing. But my one, if if I had a complaint, I must admit, I, I, when I when you look at her body of work, you realise what a fan of hers uh, you end up becoming. If you've uh, if you've ever more than uh, more than in passing caught up with her work, if it, the only thing I would criticise Sharon Horgan for is that, and I suppose when you're doing something that's semi autobiographical, this 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 is inevitable. Is that mm. you kind of from an acting perspective, you kind of always get the same. 
sort of person. I mean, she doesn't do accents. A lot of Irish people don't. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know my dad... That include you. My dad couldn't do... He couldn't do another accent to save his life, you know, so... Um, Was it considered... Uh, maybe it's not encouraged because it's seen as treasonable. I, I, it's weird, isn't it? I don't know. I was watching a guy on YouTube today who does uh, True Crime Channel... And he was trying to do an accent, an Irish guy. He's just, he just just can't do it, is he? But anyway, so what I'm saying is that you tend to get her as as the base model, and and that you know as an actress that you you kind of always get that. I was thinking, I loved her. I watched Pulling, um, the mm. the um, increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret, which is which is one of the funniest things I've seen comedy wise in a long time. Um, Dead Boss, which which she wrote, which is a kind of different vehicle, but she's the same. She's the constant throughout all of those, and that can be. Right. I don't know if if that's a criticism, then I suppose then that would be the one that you could level at her, I guess. Although you've said previously, and I hadn't noticed, and it hadn't worried me. Someone like Stephen Mangan doesn't do accents, but if you enjoy one of his pieces, the chances are you'll uh, enjoy a lot of them. Okay. I think Liam Neeson might be on the phone complaining that. According to you, no Irish people can do accents. I imagine he has to do an American accent quite a bit. Well, he just does a, 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 but then, he just does an impression of Liam Neeson, doesn't he? He doesn't. I will find you <laughs> and I will kill you. It's just like a quiet, no, I, quiet Ian Paisley, isn't it? That one. It's not. Uh, um, <laughs> well, that's a contradiction in terms. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. You can answer the correspondence on that one. I do wonder if it's harder actually as an actor or an actress to mm. to not to not put on a funny voice because. You then have to emote in a different way, don't you? You have to you have to get the essence of this character across without the aid of that prop, as it were. So maybe we're doing them in injustice, and actually, it is essentially harder to do it without putting on a voice. I don't really know if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was quite easy. Uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Um, did you know, a bit of trivia for you. Uh, you might have swatted up because you are a bit of a swat. Horgan's younger brother, Shane, do you know what he did for a living? Don't think he's doing it now. What a ridiculous name. Wasn't he, isn't he, a, isn't he a hurler or something like that? Isn't he a sportsman? Uh, he, he was uh, a sportsman. I, I, mean, I imagine he's doing it. Uh, no, no, it's more a bit more mainstream as far as I'm aware. Rugby union, oh. former international rugby union player, played wing or centre for. Le- I read that as Leicester. Forgive my English eyes. Leinster, it is pronounced Leinster. Leinster, yeah, yeah. And and Ireland. Leinster is um, uh, within Ireland. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know where that was at the back of my mind, Lodge. But yeah, I thought I thought he was I thought he was hurling or curling or whatever they play. What's that with, with a load of Irishmen get together and fight each other with sticks and there's an occasional ball thrown in? Is it is it curling or hurling? Hurling, isn't uh, it? Hurling. Friday night at the Boozer. Oh no, that could be anywhere in England or. Um, there's about fifteen uh, on each side. Is, curling is uh, Scotland's very good at that. That isn't that lots of people on the shiny floor. That's it. It's a sweeping up game, isn't it? That one. That's so the, where they, <laughs> they're all sweeping up. Oh, he's, 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 he's really trying to get that clean, isn't he? He's, <laughs> have you tried putting some? You grit can down? answer the correspondence on that one as well. <laughs> so you've upset uh, many facets of uh, the sporting world and also parts of the United Kingdom and also. Uh, the Republic of Ireland. I try my best. So, um, back to the... It must be time for a second clip, mustn't it, after all that? I can't believe you um, said that, that you've only laughed out loud once. What was the line you only laughed out loud once at? I, I'm, I'm also ashamed because it uh, involves women's knickers, oh. as uh, uh, was <laughs> my, once mentioned in Father's Ted, um, <laughs> or many times. Uh, in a, yes, it wasn't either of the leads. It was when they went to see this um, rather stuck-up uh, consultant uh, no idea where they got inspired um, to, to create a, a consultant who wasn't very good with people. Um, and uh, it's almost as though he was there for the money and the status. But, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. But anyway. Um, that was another thing with the wife's pregnancy that is, I just found abhorrent about the NHS is, is, the, is the way that consultants treat people. Wasn't the implication in, in this particular episode that she'd come from the NHS and gone private? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's no different. It's many words, and, and, it? and you'd think in that in that environment, it wouldn't be the case. But we found the consultants, the women were worse than the men. Oh no! 
we'll figure that one out. I presume they're women without children. I don't, I, you know, because they've never been on the other side of it. I guess I don't know. It was interesting actually because we knew we we knew somebody who was a midwife, and mm. uh, and and then had a baby and was was appalled at the the, the what she went through. And you just kind of think, oh, yeah. <laughs> With their colleague. <laughs> yeah. anyway. uh, what do they say? Ph- physician, heal thyself. Exactly. exactly. But I'd just like to say, uh, when I need the services of consultants, I take back everything I've just said, by the way. And uh, I was very happy with my treatment. I uh, uh, have been in, yeah. Anyway, enough groveling. Um, so, well, here's the thing. For a, a, an older woman, there is a higher chance of having a Down syndrome child uh that's medical fact uh and so as a so-called geriatric mother the conundrum then is uh do you have a, a test uh that's what amniocentesis is, is mm, that's where they, yeah, they take the fluid to, the amniotic to, fluid from the yeah uh, we went through this as well we, we she, luckily we didn't have to have an amniocentesis but um yeah, mm. they they go through and it's at the scans they they're telling you as well, but it's it's horrific mm. and, and we went through exactly the same thing because you don't you don't realise, um, um, but yeah, I mean you and then you have to I really related to this. I thought it was really well done, really well done. Yeah, and and just quickly, uh, some friends of mine uh, again a more mature first time mum. They had the, the conundrum that anyone at that age, if, if you want to have the test uh, uh, and, and, and uh, find out the likelihood, because that's all you... Uh, well, no, no, yeah, sorry. You get a likelihood, uh, the stats, but that's, that's not specific to you. So you would have to have, if you wanted to know exactly what your situation is, uh, you'd go for an amniocentesis. But the big catch is, I mean, it involves inserting an, a, a needle, which creates quite an image in my head, although... Yeah, it, it turns out it's not. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. Anyway, um, but there is the risk of aborting a healthy fetus. That's right. And then uh, the, the, my my friend who had to do the calculation said, by the time, uh, assuming you're trying, for, if that worst thing happened and you aborted a, 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 a it sort of triggered an abortion of a, a healthy fetus, a, a, a miscarriage. Um, by the time she is likely to get pregnant again, the risk of a Down syndrome baby goes up and up and up. That's right. Um, but uh, but there's an interesting twist at the end of the show, just in case it's sounding prejudicial against um, Down's kids. But we'll we'll get to that possibly, or maybe we won't give it away at all. It's like it's but, like the reverse of the national lottery, isn't it? Really, you kind of you kind of you're kind of going through it, and your odds get worse and worse for you in that sense i mean th- yeah. i have to say yeah. we you know you go to hospital and they've got all the posh machinery and all the rest of it and the machines that go ping it, we, the, uh, this is the most expensive yeah. machine in the hospital <laughs> and this is the machine that goes ping um <laughs> and you kind of assume that you are in you know the hands of these incredible people who can operate this incredible equipment only up until the point that you realize with our second child that we we had three scans and they still couldn't tell if it was a girl or a boy. Now, there is one discernible difference between the male and the female of the of the species, isn't there? And and you know if they, if you've got all these multi million pound pieces of equipment and you can't spot a ding at five yards, <laughs> my ding You know what I mean? And and apparently yeah. this is quite common. It was a, it was a girl, which is which is why they were struggling. And boys are apparently a lot easier to tell. But and she she kept crossing her leg over every time that and you think if you can foil well, these wouldn't you under the same circumstances if you were being prodded and probed and you know it it invades privacy surely in the womb it's uh, it's worse than being papped isn't it really I guess but uh, yeah I just yeah. and I just thought well this is it you 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 placing all this faith in this huge mechanism and they can't even tell what the sex of the thing is really but there you go. And I could. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about my huge mechanism. <laughs> um, I don't want to dwell on that. <laughs> I, I still to in. this day um, tell. I reckon that you can tell the difference between between a boy and a girl if, if a woman's pregnant with a boy and a girl. Is that if it's a boy, it's more that shape, which is more like a kind of space hopper. Um, <laughs> and it, and if it's and if it's a girl, it's more You've... it's more longitudinal. And it's more the the sides are narrower. That's it. And I reckon. I, you reckon? 50 women, I reckon I could tell 
40, 45 of them, whether that. But since the injunction, I can't go near the uh, maternity unit. No, so. I was going to say, 50 women, out of those 50 women, 49 of them would say, get out of my ward. I, you mind. 49 um, of them were reported Can we to get the onto police? this clip? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the other one you married, yeah. um, dear listener. Uh, <laughs> reader, I married him. So, to clip number two, uh, we find out here that Sharon is, or if we haven't already uh, watched the other episodes, uh, I only previously years ago, uh, it came out in 2015, watched uh, episode one. Not sure I got much further than that, but hey, that's me for you. Um, but we find out that uh, Sharon is a school teacher with some rather cute and charming, I think, um, uh, primary school children or whatever they call them year zero these days and um but she's just mid lesson and uh, although these days teachers either confiscate phones or tell kids to turn off phones at the beginning of the lesson she hasn't taken her own medicine pardon the pun and her phone vibrates and yes it is the clinic who want a word right turn to page 46 chapter 8 Let's read from there. Hello? Hello? Is that Miss Morris? Yep, it is. Oh, great. I thought I'd got the wrong number there. I'm calling because Dr Harris did some tests with you the other yeah. day. Yeah. Well, there was an error in the results, and it turns out the chances of chromosomal abnormality aren't one in 50, as you were told. Oh, well. Mm. Well, that's... I mean, is so that... it's actually closer to about one in 25. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there. The doctor suggested you pop in and chat about the option of amniocentesis. He can recommend an expert in the field. But let us know. OK. Sorry again. Bye now. Bye now. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay, I've just been sick. Just excuse me. There's, do you know there's a loveliness about this This whole... She's trying to navigate her way through this this new section of her life that, you know, she there is no manual for. And again, mm. this, this is, you know, when, you, when you've got personal experience of this, you do kind of, I think you either relate or you go, well, that's not how it was for me, and so how ridiculous, it's not like that at all. That tends to be the two reactions. Mm. I mean, with this, I kind of, I did find it very relatable. I found the, the, I didn't find the characters very relatable, them two. I thought they were very, it was very London-centric in that sense. You know, it's like kind of the London. Oh, your favourite part of the world. The London Cup. Well, I've um, got nothing against London, but I don't, I don't really want to see all the what do you know what I mean? I don't want to see it all the while. You don't. You don't ever. Get... No, it's not under portrayed on TV, is it? No. Even to this day. Um, did you catch? There was one line. I played it three, four times. I still couldn't hear. After her first throwing up, or the second throwing up, something about a girl throwing, but it didn't quite say. That was. Did you understand that? No, did I it? didn't. I didn't get it. No, but there was. There was lovely. There was speculation amongst the school children that she was teaching us to whether she was drunk or not. <laughs> Yeah, and, that was nice. And, but payoff. even better than that, the kid who suspected, the kid who said that he'd seen her drunk or that she'd been drunk at the fate or whatever it was, then saw her mm. quite near the end in the supermarket, didn't he? Lie, saw her lying on the ground and kind of like knowingly smiled as if to go, I told you she was drunk. <laughs> She's a drunk. Look at her. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, there's all that and, kind and of. And his mum moves him along. Yeah, yeah, it's all kind of all interwoven, isn't it? And it's really, it's really well done. It's really, it's a, I mean, it's a quality product, isn't it, really? You know, you can't, you mm. can't argue with that mm. in sense i mean the way it's shot um you know the way the way the whole thing is is put together um nice to see ashley jansen in uh jensen in there as well wasn't it As who um from extras yes and um like frankie she went to hollywood um that is the american one rather than the birmingham one um i think that's probably why i hadn't seen her for a while because i hadn't seen the sort of films she'd been in i don't know if you've been across her american adventures She's done tons of stuff, hasn't she? I, I keep seeing trails for her. Mm. I've never seen the programme. She plays a detective called Agatha Raisin. Have you seen that at all? No, I know of it, but I haven't seen it. And, and, and you know, and then obviously she did Afterlife, didn't she, as well? She was um, uh, she was the nurse that was looking after uh, Ricky Gervais's dad. It was, uh, he was in a home with oh, dementia. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, 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 anything that she's in, you kind of think... Um, Adds a, adds a bit of class. I mean, she's 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 got the whole range, hasn't she? Really. Um, 
Mar- well, I've never seen her in a role where she's allowed to be sexy, but um, I haven't seen her that much. I'm sure I would hope she's allowed to uh, have some fun as well as be the slightly miserable one. Yeah. Now, I don't, now you said it, I think probably. Did you think she was trying to put... She was trying to put on an accent, wasn't she? Wasn't she doing an accent thing? There was something going on there. when she Every time she talked, I thought, why is she talking like that? <laughs> um, I just... Well, I, I didn't really take that in, to be honest. I just... I, I kind of recoiled from the character, but then you're meant to, so that means she's acting well. Yeah, she's quite neurotic. She's not meant to be she, particularly... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway... Um, I think it's that time... Or oh, actually, did we want to touch on, um, at the risk of a, a wee spoiler, uh, touch on a, a sort of turnaround at the end or potential turnaround? Um, I'm thinking on the platform. Uh, with the, with the, platform yeah, platform. I thought that was beautiful. Do you know, that brought a tear to my mm. eye. That, I don't mind admitting. I thought that was was really sensitively... And and they didn't have to, did they? They didn't have to do that. It's like you kind of think, well, is, if you were cynical, you think, did they do that because they were worried that that um, they, they were they were just saying that uh, uh, children with Downs are just a bad thing, and you know we're portraying it in that kind that, of. That's how it could sound. That all your whole entire pregnancy is all about not having a Downs child, and then at the end we see this really cute um, girl. Um, with presumably her mum or a carer really tenderly uh, touching her. I mean, the child must be about five-ish, would you say? I'd say older than that. Um, yeah, go on. Right. I'm not very good, uh, you know, being a non-parent. Um, but, uh, which is tantamount to being an alien, of course. But um, <laughs> I, I thought, I, I, you said they didn't have to do that. I thought you, I would have thought people who have Downs, Children or work for support organisations might think, "Hang on, this whole thing needs it's it's uh, it, the whole thing needs some sort of balance." It's not uh, a public information it, film, though, is it? That's why I say no, no, no. And, and it's and not the, it's not old fashioned BBC. On the one hand, this. On yeah, the other hand, that it, it was really it was integrated. If if they'd have just done it for that, I would it would really wind me up because that isn't how life is, you know. Um, Life's rotten at times. People die. People have illnesses. People have disabilities. That's mm. the way it is. Some people don't like that. Some people do. Some people are bigoted for no reason at all. Some people hate people of certain sex, certain sexual proclivities, certain race. That's that's life, isn't it? And you can't sanitise everything. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, and if we could, I would have sanitised you. Do you think I'd be sitting here talking to you, even no. at 170 miles distance? No. So, yeah, we don't get the lives we necessarily want, but <laughs> we can hope for them. <laughs> I'm just surprised anyway, you keep coming uh, back. I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's uh, low self-esteem, I think. <laughs> you know, I'm just abused. Um, anyway, I've written down knickers here, but that was the one bit oh, I laughed at. You, you, uh, you since didn't you tell that story, did you? That was awesome, that was. You, you didn't, that, we didn't well, I don't want to spoil off. every... No. Yeah, I don't want to spoil the one moment that made me laugh. Uh, anyway, knickers to you, dear listener. Uh, you might enjoy that moment. Uh, and, and it comes from the least sympathetic... Well, one of the least sympathetic characters. Um, was there anything else you need... So, I'm surprised about an, a reference to Alan Rickman. It was by Ashley Jensen within the story because I thought he'd already died um, but by the time... But clearly, clearly can't have done, can he, by... 2015 when no, the show was made no. or um, released. Um, oh, yeah, I had I had a gripe about, and you'll think I'm being Mr. Right on, and uh, yes, I do have a subscription to The Guardian. We, <laughs> uh, like you say, life is full of pain and suffering and you don't get the friends you want. But hey, Fergal's wife sits there like an, a non-speaking extra. She doesn't even have a, a single word to say, which I find very odd. You know, I don't expect her to have reams and reams, but... Equally, she's just this shadowy presence. Maybe, right. maybe her equity card doesn't just, come through or something, perhaps until... <laughs> until yeah, I never no, noticed I think it was really. inequity, myself. Yeah. yeah. Bit, bit of an odd, eggy moment where we see her. It's like, yeah, don't speak, love, otherwise we'll have to pay you. Um, anyway, uh, it's time to... Oh, you're holding your finger up on... Um, on our Skype call. Sorry, I just, I just wanted to say I think it's your finger. the other line, that, or one of the other lines that made, there were a few others, but I thought I'd make a note of because I quite liked it. It was when she described her dad, she said, my dad's like a piece of granite with bushy eyebrows. 
<laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was good. Although, actually, yeah, no, sorry that you've uh, jogged my memory. Um, the beginning of clip number one, if anyone can remember that far back, it just, I, I don't know, I'm getting fussier because I'm writing at the moment, but um, I, I'm very critical of my own writing. So I don't, it's not that I give... I'm not sure shopping lists count, do they, as writing? Are they? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just because I'm holding this clipboard here have i shown you this the point was it was the line uh, at the beginning of clip number one uh, sharon speaking to us uh, brother fergal in the kitchen and saying oh uh it's like the un you're just an observer and i got that image that's a good one you have observer status at the un you can't vote you can't talk but that's what she wanted her brother to do while she broke the news mm-hmm. and then she says if you say a syllable i'll cut off your hand and suddenly the image of we're at the UN. I don't think they cut the hands off people who, you know. Am I being over fussy? Am I being? Yeah, I probably am. See, I, I that just face. kind of missed missed me. I, it was like kind of just a jarring moment. I didn't. I thought that didn't really. It didn't really. I didn't connect the two first of all in the same way that you have. Right. Um, no, maybe it's unfair. I might be being but, overly fussy, but, but yeah, it yeah. just jarred with me. And, no, I think if, I think if you felt like that, I think it's worth saying, isn't it? Really, it's. Uh, you know, that's what yeah. group therapy is all about, isn't it, really? Is that, you, know, you, <laughs> you get the chance. Yeah, but we need marriage guidance, you and me. Yeah. Um, or guidance away from it. Anyway, look, um, who goes first? Halt, who goes there? I think it's your turn, isn't it? I feel I've volunteered my score first couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, I think you did, actually, uh-huh. in fairness to you. Um, I hmm. I would give this... Um, I mean, for all the reasons that we talked about, really, you know, about the, it's, it is a quality product. It's something. It's very watchable. It's very. It's not. It's not ever going to be a cult classic. It's not ever going to set your world on fire. It's not ever going to be the mm. funniest thing that you've ever seen. But it's a well honed, well crafted piece of work. Um, you know, good script, good cast, well shot. I mean, what else do you want? Mm. I suppose, really. So for me. I think I'm going to probably stick it up there amongst the three and a halves. I, I'm th- I'm three and a half four, but I kind of think for four. <laughs> I mean, I I mm. would I would give something. Uh, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head you'd, what would be a four. Um, you'd want some laughs, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I think that's what knocks it down really for me, and so it kind of mm. sticks at three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to give it three and a half out of five. But yeah. but well. I, I, do you know I kind of but it's a generous it's a, it's a it's on the high side of three and a half generous three and a half <laughs> 3.74 if it was 3.75 it would tip over into anyway yeah. um, well funnily enough for once we agree um, and uh, so I won't go on at length about it so it's a classic lacy three and a half from me seven out of ten uh, quality product blah 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 um, and I like you would like uh, more laughs call me old fashioned if it comes under a comedy but um, there's loads of stuff. It is a whole genre I'm calling Smilecom. Um, I want to just say it's uh, co-produced with Merman. I don't know if that's Ethel. And Bird Bath Productions, or Bird Bath Productions, as you might say. And they seem to come under the wing, ho-ho, of Avalon Television for Channel 4. Sharon, that's Sharon Horgan's company, Merman, isn't it, I think? Is it? Yes. She a fan of Ethel? Of Ethel, Ethel. Don't, I said don't look Ethel. <laughs> no, that's a different Ethel. Um... <laughs> Now for next week, I I don't think we've ever done anything like this before. And Ooh, uh, do you want me to give you some clues and see if you can guess what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Game for enough. It's what I would call. Well, it's it's on Dave, I think, mm. uh, which is a UK TV channel, which is uh, part owned by the BBC, isn't it, uh, Dave? Uh, mm. Part of the is it the UK TV group of companies i think um well but, it was i don't know if there's been a reject but let's say that for now but um it's done about five series i think i think it's just in its fifth series uh it's a one-man show um and it's a very it's not sp- dave gorman is it because the dave of dave is very often dave gorman when i Flick onto it. Well, that is just no. amazing. You've got it straight Ooh. on the head. Very impressed. I was going I'm to say, sure. my next clip was going to be, mm. I would best describe it as Lecturecom. Ah, yes. Now, again, this was a staple diet TV dinners a few years ago, if it's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it's all internet related and he's got an overhead projector. That's right, yeah. It's uh, Modern Can't Life is the... Goodish. 
Oh, yes. It's not bad. It's not wonderful. It's goodish. Goodish, yeah. Yes. Oh, no, I look forward to seeing that again and, and, and bringing uh, the, the, the eye of uh, the comedy slab to it. It's a different treatment, isn't it, as well? I thought it'd be interesting to do because mm. it's like, you know, in the same way that we did Drunk Histories a couple of weeks ago, um, you kind of <laughs> you kind of think they're not, you know, it's not something that we've we've looked at really, this kind of... I know a few people do it now, uh, but this kind mm. of lecture and comedy mixed in sort of thing... Um, I've gone for series four, episode three, and it's entitled That's What Debt Actually Is, Actually. Uh, so I'm guessing it's dealing with the subject of debt. But uh, series four, episode three, That's What Debt Actually Is, Actually. Dave Gorman's Modern Life is Goodish. That's for next week. Fantastic. On Twitter, we are at Comedy Slab. Do follow us there, please. Also, we're at Comedy Slab. Uh, that's at uh, Facebook, our Facebook page. If you could like that, we'd like you in return. We already do, but um, uh, if you can recommend us to friends and family and anyone else who either crosses your threshold or your Zoom screen, whichever is the sooner. Uh, we're in lockdown, but you, dear listener, in the future may not be, you lucky people, or geographically you might be in another part of the world altogether, free of such things. Um we can only look on in envy and a, a generous star rating please on itunes through apple podcasts uh, is generously received thank you in advance uh, don't forget we're uh, we're on spreaker stitcher iheart radio uh, spotify youtube you name it in fact if you've got one of those wide in fridges we're probably in there <laughs> just near the ice dispenser i think at the back with the old bird's eye fish fingers that are jammed up against the side you really should defrost it that's how much we are everywhere we know that you need to defrost your fridge 